We're almost there, getting ready to set sail once again to head off on Kadoa for more exploration of our nation's most idyllic of locations. To share with you all too, as we both learn and grow with this remarkable new life on the water. I have to be honest with you, this winter has felt so incredibly long. But with a life living on a sailboat, this is also our busiest period. And we didn't waste any time at all rolling our sleeves up to jump straight into the long list of boat repairs and maintenance jobs. It's amazing to think just how far we've come from knowing absolutely nothing about boats. And in just three years, we're braving just about every job that needs doing ourselves. Although we have had a couple of issues so far this winter, which we felt were just too important to leave to our amateur DIY skills, and so called in some professionals. In the warmer months, whilst we're living at anchor, you get a good feel for any modifications or upgrades you'd like to make when the winter does in fact roll in again. For us, there were a few key areas we wanted to tackle. The first was a repair which we felt as if it was right at the top of the priority tree, our AIS. Early into our summer adventures last year, the signal on our AIS became very intermittent to the point where it was essentially no use at all. Given that we also don't have any radar on Kodoa, this felt like a pretty big chink in the armour of our safety equipment. After a bit of, well, you guessed it, online research, most people believed the fault would be aerial related. Now, we only fitted an entire new VHF cable last year to Kodoa, so we decided to attach a splitter so that we could share the signal between the radio and the AIS. And hopefully, this would solve the problem once and for all. Now, I would say that was a successful mission. We once again have AIS. So hopefully you will all be able to see us on our journeys in the future. Another potential issue we spotted, which is kind of related to this visit, <laughs> happened occasionally when we were at anchor. Sometimes the anchor bedded in so well that it, it sometimes, well, it was hard for the windlass to retrieve. And every now and then, when the tension got just high enough, we saw a small amount of flex from right underneath the windlass. So, to try and tackle this, we decided to install some aluminium bars directly under the windlass, which the fixings actually pass through in an attempt to hopefully spread the load just that little bit more. The next modification we decided to make was to the guardrails, ending at the station where the pivoting solar panels are fixed onto. This means we can much more easily rotate the panels than we could when the guardrails ran all the way aft. Whilst at it, we decided to add some gate catchers, so they could essentially drop the rails, if we wanted to. To be fair, the old ones had come to the end of their life, and so we used the opportunity to make the new ones just that bit shorter. And the next modification we actually made was entirely unplanned, yet as it happens, I think it's fair to say it's turned out to be just about one of the most useful we've made so far this winter. If you cast your mind back a few episodes when a now good friend of ours, Richard Thorogood, Thorogood, it's a damn fine name. Anyway, 
Richard, on behalf of Selden, organised for us to install the remarkable E40i electric winch. Yet after doing so, we realised that without many lines running back to the cockpit, this amazing bit of kit really was a bit wasted on just our main sheet. So with a few tweaks to our deck gear, we managed to transform a task which at times was really challenging. And that task is hoisting up the dinghy. You see, our dinghy isn't a tall arm. Solid, it? It's a solidly built aluminium hull hyphen, which is again, another amazing bit of kit. Night and day compared to our previous inflatable tender, but it weighs a ton. We don't actually have any davits on Kadoa, so Dingbat, that's the name of the dinghy, lives on deck when we're sailing. Which means basically clipping a halyard to her and winching her up out of the water. Now here's where occasionally some problems can arise. You see, Carly really struggles to winch Dingbat out of the water. She's just too heavy for her. Now this isn't the end of the world as I'm strong enough to do the job. Although the winch we use isn't self-tailing so this can be a bit tricky sometimes too. So whilst I'm winching, Carly assumes the position as the dinghy blocker, tasked with stopping Dingbat from smacking into the side of Kadoa and then guiding the dinghy down onto the deck. Now on a good day, or even most days for that matter, this is a perfectly straightforward task. However, if the wind picks up a little bit or the anchorage becomes just that bit rolly, then Carly can easily become overpowered Dingbat that can turn into a bit, of a bit of a wrecking ball. This is where the E40i comes into its own. With a few minor deck modifications, with simply the push of a button, armed with a gin and tonic in the other hand, Carly can effortlessly lift Dingback up and onto the boat. Whilst instructing her deckhand where to place it afterwards, it actually makes much more sense for me to be in the role of blocker, as I have just that little bit more weight behind me which I gained intentionally, of course, for, you know, situations just like this. Now, aside from modifications, there's the perennial repairs and maintenance, of course, that comes with owning a 40-year-old boat, all of which we got stuck straight into. Firstly, we stripped, cleaned and serviced all of the winches of Walkadar. We stripped and serviced the windlass, ensuring we clearly marked where everything was before dismantling it so that hopefully putting it back together again wouldn't be too too tricky. Then there's the annual full engine service which I feel I'm just about starting to get the hang of now. And this consists of an oil change, a coolant change, fuel and oil filter changes, alternator belt change and a deep clean this time around of our engine's fuel system itself. And then I've taken this apart and most of it's already fallen out but that'll give you an extent of how much and three long years ago, after removing our stay sail boom system, the unbelievably helpful team from Allman Sales came to help us reinstate it on the second hand furling system I managed to cobble together from a, a bunch of spare parts in the yard back last year. Now Rob came down to size up what we needed for the new stay sail. And then, a few weeks later, Carly and I headed down to the south coast Allman Sail Loft where we met the entire team who were doing the work for us. You see the staff down in the Allman Sail Loft hadn't just created a new furling stay sail for us, but they'd also repaired, cleaned and generally serviced our mainsail and our Genoa too, as well as replaced the UV strip on the headsail to match the new stay sail. Hank is as excited about the brand new sale as we are. <laughs> Look at that! Wowzers, very smart. <laughs> that is very smart. <laughs> now luckily there seems to be more than enough jobs going in marinas and boatyards for Carly and I to make enough money to pay for all of this. And of course the annual winter jobs wouldn't be complete without a lift out to do Kadoa's anode change, sail drive oil change, and give her tired old paintwork a bit of a spruce up so she can hold her head high in any anchorage. And then finally, her annual anti-fouling bottom job, which 
we once again enlisted the help of someone who's since working on Kadoa the first time has now become a really good friend. Mikel is back again to make Kadoa look beautiful. We got a lot of compliments after your work last time, mate. But what's this uh, what's this little beauty spruce up gonna cost me? Not a lot of money, we look after you as always. I get a special price, huh? Indeed. And regular uh, customer. <laughs> <laughs> and what about any of the uh, the Kadoa viewers? Maybe got a boat in the Solent area? Give them get, a bit of a deal? Yeah, they get a discount. Alright, I like that. That's fine, yeah. I will pop your details in the link below, mate. Sure, thank you. Alright, let's do it. And that brings you right up to speed with exactly where we are now. It is Thursday, the 9th of June. And we are tantalizingly close to setting sail now. And I want to say a massive gargantuan thank you to everyone that's jumped on the Patreon team. Because in this case, in this video specifically, this video would not be possible without you. Because you may have noticed we've been gone for the best part of a month. And that's because our video editing machine has been in the shop for nearly a month. And... It has been just unbelievably difficult to try and edit our old footage that's shot in 4K on a cheaper, lesser machine. It's been a nightmare. So we had to bite the bullet and buy a brand new uh, video editing computer. And that, that, that makes my eye water when I think about how much these things cost. And if it wasn't for you, everyone out there that supports us, then this video might not even exist for a few weeks to come yet as we scrimped and saved to try and buy another machine. So sincerely this video is made possible by you so thank you very much and personal thank yous to everyone that's jumped on board since last time and that is dave lockhart mark and cassie sadovsky simon and claire parks claire and their son charlie i said hello to you the other day they swung by the boat so hello again and thank you david smith alexander baker cindy turner don Sargent, warren dalstrom and oh, this may be the name of the boat kirk flies all of you, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this, and we cannot wait to take you to some amazing new places very, very soon. Bye for now.